This episode is sponsored by Collins Morgan. If you live in Scotland and are struggling with debt, act now. Call us or visit our website, Collins Morgan. We listen, we advise, you decide. When we're on, we're on. today's guests have got the James and Shani Davenport. How are you, brother? I'm good, James. Really good. good. I'm up at a beer, to be honest, and see you face to face, finally. It's eventually good to see you, mate. We yeah. spoke a long time. Um, yeah. Recovery's in your cool. For anybody that's in the struggle, battling with addictions, mental health, Shani's the main man. This is a podcast for these. Shani's played in the Super League, like Lead Rhinos, boxed in Kozagi's undercard battled addiction problems and you've totally transformed your life. You've also sang songs, Friends with Robbie Williams. You're doing massive things now, mate, and I'm proud to say you're a good friend, mate. I'm proud of you taking the journey to, to be here today. So I don't sit with any questions, mate, but we'll go right back to where it all started, where you grew up and how you got involved in the kind of madness you got involved in and right. then changed. Cool. Um, well, I suppose because tomorrow I'm doing a main share and I would try to... When I do a main share, I mean like in a fellowship meeting of either Cocaine Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, or Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and my share kind of sticks to um, where it all began for me. And it wasn't drugs and alcohol, uh-huh. which I thought it was forever. I thought they was my problem. But then I quickly found out when I got into recovery, um, that wasn't the problem, it was my thinking. So when I got well, uh, from working a, pro- a 12-step program in my life of recovery, I was able to look back and um, I believe I found that that distinctive, that, 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 that moment in, in my life as a child when something happened to my thinking and it all started from drinking out of a dirty puddle. Mm-hmm. I was seven. Um, I remember the day well. It had been raining for days and then the, the day after it was red hot, I was playing out and um, my grandma shouted me from across the way, to come in and get a drink, I was going to be grounded because I was a naughty little bastard anyway, just as normal kids was, but I used to always get grounded. And um, I, I made a, de- a decision for myself. Instead of going up to get the clean water and getting grounded, I made a decision to drink out of this dirty puddle. And it wasn't just your average puddle with clean water, it was fucking disgusting water that everybody stood the, the feet into. And I, I remember getting on my hands and knees and um, I just drank the puddle dry. I remember it, it didn't taste that nice, but it was quenching my thirst. And as I got back up on my knees, something had happened in that moment. That was like a defining moment. And I believe it was that that was when my alcoholism, this disease uh, in my thinking was kind of awoken because it was like, well, I've just made a decision for myself. What about everything else? And I started thinking quickly. It was like I became mature in a split second. It's like I had my glasses off. I was a child and all of a sudden I put these glasses on. I was like 15 in my thinking. And from that day, it's been fucking chaos in my thinking ever since. Um, Fear, this is a fear-based disease that I've got. I was very scared all of a sudden. I started to be more of aware of like the dark. I started to piss the bed. Um, I started to manipulate people. Um, Food became a comfort. I didn't know drugs. I knew, I knew I needed something to set me away from this thinking. So my first drug of choice was food. Um, I started fixing on food. I was, I was obsessed with food, eating all the time. And then through eating a lot, you know, it's, I, I come across vinegar. See, these are, they all might, might sound mad, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put this into the film that we're making so people can get some identification. I think I was quite odd behaving as a child. And I got a bit of a kick off vinegar. And then I remember starting stealing vinegar from people's houses and I was locking myself up in a, a dark room because I knew it was naughty. I started drinking the vinegar, I get like a weird kick. Um, and that progressed. I was doing it all the time. And it was, I know now what was going on. I was taking myself out of my own thinking because I wasn't comfortable with this new thinking of mine. And like I say, from that moment, I believe that was the defining moment. I sparked off alcoholism. I believe it was there anyway, but it just needed so much to nudge it. And then I was away then. Um, that trigger point for you? Definitely. All from drinking out of the puddle. Any family members, alcoholics or addiction me, problems? My old man, me, my real dad. Mm-hmm. Um, it killed him about seven seven years ago this year. 
Um, he was out of my life when I was one. So they, they, they kind of factored with him. He was an alcoholic. I knew that. He left me and my sister. Um, I, w I was alone with my sister and my mum. Um, and that's where all the fears come in. And he should have been around for me. And do you know what I mean? I fucking hated the man. Do you think that was a defence? Like a, a kind of barrier when you have like, a bottle of vinegar, say? Yeah. If you maybe see him in a bottle where it's whiskey, alcohol, and you've replaced that yourself because you've model imaged him and seen that for such a long time. Well, looking in the film, when we started to write the film, I, I've been writing a book from the age of... Um, I started in my late 20s, and it all starts from the age of seven, and these moments that I'm talking about. Um, and I remember him, he'd pick us up now and then, me and my sister, um, and it'd be very rare occasion. And when he would pick us up, he would take us back to a pub, Always a pub, fucking drinking, boozing. Um, he was a proper drinker. Um, or back to his flat, his dingy flat. And I always remember little things like he had a guitar in the corner of his room. My, my real dad was a, a good rugby player, a musician, songwriter. Even down to the people that he, he loved in music, I followed in his way, identically, but I never knew him. Until like later years, I, I, like I cottoned on, I was following in his footsteps in every single fucking way. And I hated him for what he'd done to me and my sister. So in my head, I was like, I'm going to be a better rugby player than him. I'm going to be a better singer than him. I'm going to be a better this, that and the other. And then I became the better drinker than him. Wow. Um, so I always remember him having a drink. The vinegar, not as such a relation to my dad. It was doing something for me. But I'd, like I say, I used to get grounded a lot on bananas. And um, there was always a barrel of keg in the end room, and it must have been a couple of years after me being seven, I'd, I'd turn the tap and I'd have a drink of this, this, this ale, and fucking hell, that was it. I landed then. Vinegar was no more. The only thing that got me off vinegar was alcohol. The booze? Yeah. Do you think that was to escape though, the pain or the hurt, the maybe abandonment issues that you had when you were Yeah, well it, took me, it certainly took me away from my thinking, so I didn't mind getting grounded that much anymore. So yeah, I, I started to drink out of this barrel quite often. And then th that just, it was a progression from food to vinegar. So weird behaviours, um, even sexual behaviours. As a young, youngster, like at nine, uh, I had babysitters. They, this is all going to be in the film so I can speak openly and honestly about it. And I had a sex drive like no other as a child, you know. Uh, I can remember it was fucking, it was quite erratic how I was. Um, babysitters. A lot older than that. I was manipulating by this time. As you know, us addicts were fucking experts yeah. at manipulating. So I'm getting, picking up skills. Um, so sex was another form of escape for me. Young girls, you know, I'm not saying like, I mean like at my age, but as I was a youngster, I was manipulating girls at my age, but then it wasn't enough. I wanted more, I wanted the older women. You're talking a nine, ten year old child here. So it was as if I became a teenager overnight. And all these weird behaviours was um, kicking off. But when I put that alcohol in, something happened then. Um, that was it. That, that was my thing then. And then from then it was like school. Um, at the early days of high school, I was on the piss in school, taking Bacardi and beetroot jars, um, LSD, I found LSD, weed, all the usual fucking suspects, aerosol cans, Sipex, anything. I could get my hands on, I wanted it. Um, food, I had a, I still, I still had the obsession with food today. I had, bul I had bulimia for over 20 years, um, making myself sick, overfacing myself, and it was the same with everything else, the vinegar, the food, then the alcohol, then the drugs, nothing was ever, and has never been enough. Girls, you know, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't even like to look at the figures that are fucking, I was very sexually active from fucking early age, me. Uh, it was all part of the same thing, under the same umbrella of madness. Because um, we're searching, all that stuff is to search, to numb the pain, yeah. it's, whether it's drink, drugs, women, it's to f fulfill that emptiness that we've got to, to do that. But real, realistically, when you do that, you become more disconnected. Yeah. Did, when you started drinking heavy, when did you start getting into the drugs at age? Early. Um, soon, I'd say about 12, you know, aerosol cans. Uh, that was like something else then, other than the alcohol. Because I was always nicking alcohol from places and stuff. You know, like family parties and stuff. I was always the one that wanted to get pissed as a child. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but then aerosol, that, that took me, me thinking into another realm. That I was like, wow, this, is, this isn't it. Uh, so I was sniffing gas all the time. Even to the point where my mum used to have a rollers and she used to fill it with like the old gas. 
Remember the old yellow yeah, gas? Yeah, yeah. And uh, she called me. I was fucking sweating it in the house. Did anybody notice any erratic changes or did they notice you were drinking or doing bad things or did you hide it well? Because you know yourself, anybody with addictions, we're the best liars out there. I think in the early days, I didn't hide anything. Um, I wasn't asked. Everyone kind of knew that I was quite a chaotic kid. Um, and I lived in some rough streets and we kind of had to bring ourselves up pretty quick in, in that area. Um, so drinking and using, it was just part of the norm. Everything was normal and everything was good. I can look back and think, I had some of the best times of my fucking life using drugs and uh, drinking alcohol and going out on the piss. But I'd started very early. So come the ages of like when I, I got kicked out of school, I mean, I was suspended twice. No, sorry, I was, I was suspended 12 times from high school, excluded twice. And then I was just expelled because when I was in school, I had this mature head on me. I was acting like one of the teachers. Very mature, manipulating them, knowing that I really wasn't going to get bollocked for doing anything wrong. I mean, I used to get caught at the traffic light. I had my own car at school, smoking cigs and throwing them out, and the teachers waving like, <laughs> <and Paul's> like <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, you're not in school now, mm. fuck off. I was like a big man. I looked mm. like a, I had a beard and everything in school. So I became a man in school. I was dealing drugs in school. Um, so as soon as they says out, I was like, well, how, was the area, how was the area you grew up in? Was it rough or was it? Sulphur Precinct. It was like, yeah, it's tough. Tough. Do so you have to grow up fast in any yeah. kind of deprived areas or areas that yeah. are no well, middle class or you've got to go because it's, it's, it's drink, drugs, and violence. It's survival mode. You're in a fucking jungle, basically. Yeah. You'd have, a, um, you know, it's one of them. It's, you'd have a destroy or be destroyed. And I, I wasn't down with fucking, uh, I was very scared. Everything I've, I've made of myself, I believe I created a monster out of myself. The, the seven-year-old child, James, that was taken away by this disease, I believe, at the age of seven, was scared, but he, he built something with his disease and he created me, the monster. Is That's that to give protect. you a shield because you were vulnerable or maybe protect. because you were insecure, so you created this crazy monster in yeah. your mind because you felt as if it would keep people away? Yeah, manipulate. I was scared of people having me. Um, I was only with me, my mum and sister, the only girls in the house. So I had to kind of create a defence. You had to kind of be the father figure as well and look after them, protect maybe. Well, not as much. I mean, my sister and my mum are the only people that have ever given me fucking shit. Everyone else, they get told to fuck off. Not today, like, but back then, um, I was quite disciplined with them. I was quite, I had my manners. I always had good manners with my mum and sister. But out there, outside of the house, it was danger, it was danger, I seen danger all the time. So I had to, I had to think fast. And uh, even in school, I was always manipulating ways of being the best in that. I've always wanted to be the best at summer. Um, I couldn't ever be second best. I had to be the best criminal, the best gangster. I needed to, to, to sell more drugs. I needed to be physically stronger than everybody else. I needed to be at the top of my game all the time. And that, that, that started from early childhood. But I can, I can look back and think it really started at about 14, 15, when you, you get that kind, that kind of change over as a young lad then, when you start turning into to a man then. And I still had all these fears, uh, so quickly manipulated people to uh, gangs. I started knocking about with all the lads, criminals in the area, for defence, to protect me. Yeah. But then I didn't feel so protected, so what I'd do then, I'd, I'd manipulate situations to become the leader of them lads and then it keeps stepping up and I just I was constantly stepping up all the time and it was like I said before it's it became exhausting in my late 30s I had to live up to this reputation day in day out all weekend I'd be out in the party scenes clubbing it doing as we did good fun um so you know um and, and every monday i'd get back up i'd get back into the gym because i had to be physically well and ready for fucking action throughout that week mm -hmm. because i was robbing people i was harming people i was I a, a giant round of drug dealing i'd become a a, a, a well-known um criminal locally in salford and manchester so then that, that made it even worse and there's more people after me now and it's i constantly had to get bigger and better make different moves, start selling more drugs. Um, when did you get the boxing? Well, that came, like, through my criminal activity. I've, I've always, I always, I became physically big and fit for my, for my age, 16 and 17. I was more like a man. 
I was I was going to nightclubs and fucking tearing up with the Dolmans in Manchester at a very young age. So I was renowned to be a fighter. And I was a good fighter as well because I, I trained myself because I needed to, to defend myself against no one that was after me. No one was after me at the end of the day. Everyone fucking liked me because I was a lovable kind of guy. But my illness was very feared about everything. So, yeah, I, I was renowned for that. And then I was... Boxing come after the rugby, a little bit after the rugby. Uh, one of my old friends from school come and see me. I was at one of my fancy cars. And uh, he just said, you should come down with rugby and play. Because I played a bit in school and I got banned for life. Some big bully was fucking trying to pound me on the, on the rugby field. And I couldn't have that. I had a reputation by this time. Um, so what I quickly done was come off the field, took the boots off, realised they had a weapon in my hand, the big old studs. And I went over and I assaulted this, I assaulted him bad, um, made a mess of him. And then I was banned for life, I could never play rugby again. But then obviously I was out of school. So I joined this rugby club and because I was on steroids and I was very, my ego was massive. No one could be better or faster than me. Um, I quickly fell into rugby. Um, I became like the conference league fucking um, champion at the I think I saw a record from like 20 odd years ago, the f five tries in a game. I'd be, I could do 100 metres in 10.5 seconds. I was a proper athlete, but I was still a junkie as well. Mm -hmm. Fucking loved it. I loved this kind of lifestyle that I lived because I was a, I kind of lived two lives. Mm -hmm. I was a junkie, criminal, chaotic bastard. But then on the other hand, I was an athlete mm -hmm. as well. So I was kind of mixing, I was kind of burning the candle at both ends. But like I said before, my candles are like them old birthday candles. You blow out and they, they relight again. Yeah. That's how my candles have been. They, they, they never fucking die out. Um, but because I continued to, to, to do things, evolve into something new. So the rugby lasted for a while. I, got, I played at Salford Rugby. Um, then I got picked up for Lee Drynos. Didn't like it because it was out of my control. I didn't understand the game. I was being told what to do. You know, by some big guys from Yorkshire, and I'm in my head, I'm thinking, fuck off. Mm -hmm. I wasn't down with it. I fell out of rugby, and then I was picked up for boxing. Jamie Moore, who's um, doing really well in the world of boxing now, he, he was the British champion. Uh, he ended up being the British champion. Uh, he, we, we met in a, in a boozer, and we had to offer out a way. He was very similar to me, and I'd heard about this, this lad that could have a bit of a do. And I kind of took to him, I took him under my wing a bit at the time. Brought him into my world, which was exciting for us both. And we became like fucking glee me and we were together all the time. And he said, you, you'd be on that boxing, you. You know, so he took me to a gym and I was about 15 stone. And then big Steve Foster, the Viking, the old Viking, he'd spotted me in there. He didn't like me at the time because I'd fucking been having rounds with half of these, mate. <laughs> so he's like, you were a fucking boxer. You're more of a light middle, you. And I kind of fell into that. And same again, because I had a reputation locally. Um, I started it in the papers then, rugby, rugby player, boxer, and it started to it kick something off, do you know what yeah. I mean? So I thrived off that and I started to curb my other activities then, the criminal activities and the, the chaos. I was becoming like a bit of a local celeb. Mm -hmm. So again, my disease loved that and wanted more. So that to that attention. Loved it. Fucking thrived off it. And this day, listen, this, we still thrive off it, but we're child in a different way. Yeah, yeah. We're all self-seeking. Of course you know, I say it all the time, it's shinny off the self-seeking show. And I, I, I was very aware of what I was doing in my um, my latter years uh, before I started to find recovery. I was just seeking attention all the time. So when I was getting it, I fucking loved it. So I couldn't get it enough. Uh, so I had one amateur fight and then that wasn't enough. So I fucking, I said, I'll just turn pro. Not many people do it. I had one amateur fight. So I put it to the boxing board. They watched me spar and they gave me my license. And that was it. And I, I, I was like knocking kids out, but I was still living a life. Because um, you're on the card, the Joko Zaghi. That was my final fight. One of the biggest, I believe one of the greatest fighters of all time. Maybe Jeff Lace, yeah. yeah. He's the best in Britain. I don't think he anyway. gets the recognition that he deserves. Yeah, yeah. Because undefeated to fight, I think 40 odd fights. I think about 10 years he was a um, British champion and no one, what he had no that's... recognition and yeah. all of a sudden he got it. Just his last five fights though, I think he went to America and... Burned up Kings, yeah, gave him a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, but guys like that, but for the story, for everything you've been through, did you ever, was you ever suicidal, did you ever contemplate suicide? All the time, 
from being about, the hard drug started at about 17 when I started cocaine. That was it. Um, quickly became addicted to cocaine. Um, so for a couple of years, it was cool. I was still doing everything. Uh, it was like a structure. Weekend out, chaos, robbing people through the week, selling drugs, doing crazy shit, training and eating well and fucking shagging birds, all that madness throughout the week. Um, but it started to fucking... I started being, becoming my fucking, I can say it, my best customer. Mm -hmm. You know, I had rounds of drugs being sold, but I started fucking robbing my own people that was doing drugs for me, you know, pounding them up and taking the stuff. It was my stuff. I was robbing off myself. Um, and it, became, it started to become a party for one. I'd always end up on my own, isolating again, in the dark. Now I can look back. It's like that childish behaviour he had. I'd always be doing something in the dark, out of the fucking way. Um, preferably naked. I used to do mad things. I'd, 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 I'd fucking have loads of coke. I'd do mad things. I'd strip off, waiting for anyone to come in. I felt paranoid to death. Yeah. You know, and they, we've got to put this in the film over the next few weeks. Um, hence why I've lost all this weight. Grew a big beard because for weeks and then I'd, I'd go on like, like, you're talking like later when I got out of the coke. The only thing that got me off coke was crack. Mm -hmm. It was, I'd landed again, 10 year cold kid with a bad habit. And then I'd, I'd found this other thing then. And it was like, it was like the, the alcohol to the vinegar. It was like, wow. Replacement. Yeah, straight away. Uh, didn't want cocaine no more. I wanted this other thing. Uh, so there's only so much drugs you can take before you need to start taking more and more and more. Or yeah. else you replace it with stronger stuff. Yeah. How long were you on the crack for? 10 years. And that was like, it wasn't even a secret. Um, I can't, I, like an idiot, I kind of prided myself on it because um, I was still physically well, training, running businesses. I had a nickname, they called me Blade, where I used to go smoking crack because I'd smoke crack all night and then I'd go out in the day working and they'd say, you like Blade, you, you like the fucking, like a day walker because when they're asleep, I was out living a normal life but then I had the secret life at the night when people was in, you know, in bed asleep, tucked up in the beds. Um, I was out and another world awakens and, you know, you're in Glasgow. I would have a field day in Glasgow. Um, it'd be easier for me to access crack cocaine, heroin, prostitutes. It's easier. Anywhere in, anywhere in the country, I'll tap into it if I, if I needed to. Um, so it was just a chase all the time. And I was suicidal throughout from being like 25. I've wanted to stop. I've always wanted to stop using drugs um, from being 25. Just didn't know how. So I'd do things, I'd box again, or I'd even start playing rugby again. But then the music, I've not even fucking, you know, we're not going on about that. It's, that was 20 years I was involved with the music. Another one again, another stage, another self-seeking, you know, loved it. So at one point I was playing rugby, I was a boxer, and I was doing some big shows. I was up here at the Battlelands for New Order. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my first ever show as a lead, as a frontman of this band that, that I'd got together. So I was, it was just always the chase, escapism. Mm -hmm. um, Different things. Yeah. Just to keep replacing it, but again, the demons are still there, because no matter what we drugs we take, no matter what activity we do, new, whether it's boxing, football, fucking ballet dancing, it's here, the demons are in here, yeah. this, this fucker here. Yeah. And I always say, 95% of your days control your subconscious. So we're in robotic mode, we're, we do the same shit day in, day out, it's to break that mold and do something consistently. They say it takes 21 days to break a habit, 21 days to create a new one. But everybody, when you've got addiction problems, whether it was gambling with me or drugs or whatever, I wanted to stop every day. And then you feel like a failure when you stop for two days and then you slip back, so you get head under the covers and lock the doors and switch the phone off because you feel like a failure and a fraud. And you know, yet people shame. say, how are you getting? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm great, I'm great. The big, the big fucking smile, I can light up a room. But yeah. again, it was just to escape the world, the, the pain that was going on. I couldn't understand why I hated life or why I was taking so much drugs because I, I couldn't handle me in here. And yet I was a big man at the party. He's always showing off. And the really, mask on. Yeah, the mask yeah. straight on. Bullshit. Yeah. Um, but same again, the defence, how are you doing? I sound them all right, mate, but inside you would have been the same. You feel that void, it's like, mm. I'm not all right, but I don't know what I fucking tell anyone because it's... Pride, especially if you've got that ego and pride. Yeah, and... people always told me, you don't speak about your feelings. It's like, today I can look at my son and my son's got a relationship with me like my mother. And my daughter, well, she's eight, he's 15. 
And anything he wants to talk about, he doesn't reach out to his mum. Mm-hmm. Comes to his dad because I've 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 tapped into this kind of way of life now where honesty is key. I don't lie no more. I manipulate and harm people. And it's, it's it's kind of the ripple effect is it's on my own it's on my own son now. Your kids are a reflection of you. If it wasn't for, for Donovan, I would have killed myself uh ten times over. Um it was him that and I've had chats with Donovan about this. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't kill myself because I had a baby boy by this time. Um and I just couldn't do it because our dad left me and my sister and it affected my sister in such a way. Her thinking she's She's pretty fucking chaotic herself. She's just never picked up drugs and alcohol, but she's a she's a family alcoholic. She's a workaholic. Mm-hmm. She cannot Keeps sit busy. with herself. Yeah. So I see it in loads of people, me. You can't. I can't sit with my own thinking. Yeah. Still, and I'm nearly two years clean and sober, and I accept that two and a half decades of fucking using drugs hard and drinking alcohol, it's not just going to go overnight. But I do believe I'm getting a lot better. I've sl- believe it or not, I've slowed down a lot. Mm. Can't stop. You can't shut me up. If it's like, like, <laughs> that's why we're on the show. It's that's why you see it. Yeah, if you get a fucking show up or what? But it's because because I, I'm, I've got social anxiety, and that's what happens with us addicts. We've got very low self esteem, so our egos have to become big. As we just sit there, we're, mm. we're crippled with with the, the, the feelings. So what we do, we overpower things. I can go in any room. It could be. A list of celebrities, this, that, and the other. I've got to control, I've got to command something in that room. If not, I've got to be out of there because I'm not comfortable then. So, my mouth, my ego, my, this boisterous thing that I've got, it's, so, it's like, a, like, a, like a shield. Of course, as everything you've been through, you've got your own show on Facebook, the Shinny Show Live, which I love, mm. Instagram again, every day. You, when, a lot of people, when they change, sometimes they preach. I was one of the guys that preached the fucking this is a Oh, I tried all that. Get I've on, done all that myself. Again, really. but that's just to, because it's a lonely journey as well. Listen, yeah. I've relapsed after relapsed and get back. When I do, when I'm off it, I do amazing things in my life because I focus my energy into concentrating on me and progress in my life. So everything you've came through, you've got your Facebook show, you've got your Instagram, you're posting videos every single day. You still battle your demons every day and you're clearing that the, to show, but it doesn't stop you. Because you know, you've said it millions of times, if you lie in your bed and the demons come in and that's when the bad yeah. thoughts come through. When you started doing your show and stuff, what gave you the motivation to do that? Well, it, it first started when, um, the, the Christmas song, basically, I'd I, I gone, gone into detox and um, I couldn't do it. I was, I was going to kill myself, basically. Even though I had done it, I just, the, the kids got took from me because uh, mo- that was the first time they'd, they'd ever done it. I said, you can't have the kids until you get fixed. I didn't know how to fix myself, so I went to a detox unit, quickly got kicked out because I went in there with an ego, like I knew everything. I was disruptive, aggressive, they kicked me out, and then I went on a three-month bender then, um, straight back to my drug of choice to crack, and it come to, to the point where I was on my hands and knees to my key worker in front of my own mum, and I begged her. I said, if you don't get me in, I'm going to kill myself. I'll kill myself today. I was convinced I was going to kill myself. And Angela, you know, she, she, I'm sure she realises how much work I do in the field of recovery now. She has had a massive part to, to play in this. She looked me in the eye and she says, do not let me down. I knew, they were, I seen something in, in the deeds opportunities, there was groups every day, two groups a day, and I, I seen something in their meetings. I don't know if I felt it, certainly seen something happening, and it was, it, there was a power between people, which I now know the therapeutic value and one addict or a person struggling helping helping another is without parallel. Um, and I, I needed to get back to that. So I said, right, I'll get me in, get me in. They got me in and I attended the two meetings a day. I come out of there after two weeks. I thought, I've got this. I quickly wrote a Christmas song um, straight into a studio. There again, my disease wasn't on the drugs and alcohol no more. It was on something else. It found something else. Something for me to do was getting a kick off it. And then I started doing um, Facebook lives for this Christmas song. I've said, I'm going to get this Christmas number one. Manipulated the, the total industry, the music industry, and started getting a few celebrities, a couple of A-listers that I knew. There was a shout out. I then were, then were contacting others. They've just done it. Are you going to do it? And I, I, I made this thing out of nothing. It was a groovy song, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted nothing to do with Christmas. 
But in my head, he's like, right, let's make it the best song ever. My disease was all over it again. He loved it. <laughs> so yeah, I can find my disease for a lot of things today. Mm -hmm. Boxing career, music and rugby career. That wasn't me. That was my ego and my disease that I tapped into some, that was some form of escape. Um, and I have to continue through it every day. So the shows, they became a fix. So what you'll see now every day when you see the show, you're seeing Shinna addicted to something else. I'm addicted to recovering. I have to be. I'm addicted to helping others. I'm addicted to being a good man, being a good friend, carrying a good message, you know, being a good dad. I'm addicted to all them things and I strongly believe this disease is never going to go in me. It's, it's locked in my thinking. It lives in my subconscious thinking mm -hmm. and it'll always wake up before me. Oh, we get the memories every day. I get yeah. the memory. I, I hear constant things about gambling and bets. That stuff, that fucking gets me wet, man. I'm, yeah. I'm ready. In yeah. my mind, I put on bets in my head and I go, wait a minute, I can't go back down that route. We never know it's around the corner. But for anybody listening, anybody can change and I always promote it. Anybody can change. When you, was that the turning point for you when you, hands and knees, I'm ready to change? Was that that? She decided, I'm giving this everything to, to better my life and change my life. And the results speak for themselves. Anybody that's in the struggle, and a lot of people are in the struggle, this man's, watch this man's stuff. He knows how to change and he believes in he can change and you've said your addiction is trying to help others. That's still self-seeking because it makes us feel good. Yeah. The homeless stuff I yeah. do makes me feel good. Yeah. So why would I not do it? You're helping others plus I'm helping me. Everything I do is to help me because I feel good because in here, there's days I feel right or not good enough. There's that fine line yeah. and I, I love it as well. It's like, you know, when, uh, when I say, do you not, you know, when people say, I've done a good deed for the day and they post it on, mm -hmm. I've helped this homeless guy and it's mm -hmm. like, that's not a good deed. Mm -hmm. Good deeds are for the network. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there's a fine line because the big book tells us as well, and I don't, I don't like to preach about the, the 12 steps. I try and keep it as I'm a person in long-term recovery, but I pick up a lot from that 12-step program. And it, when all else fails, when you're struggling, go and help someone. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Why? Because we get a good feeling from that. Mm -hmm. So the people that say, I'm totally selfless, me. I do all this selflessly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do it to a certain extent, but we're always going to get gratification. No, there's always it? something to, yeah, feel yeah, good. Yeah, to feel good factor. And that's, that's a feeling that you can't buy. That's yeah. a drug that you cannot take to give you that feeling of satisfaction that you've helped someone else. But I believe you can only help other people when you're actually helping yourself as well. And there's, there's a lot of people who feed their own ego when they do a homeless deed, they're, they're trying to help the homeless in the video that. They're doing that for the wrong reasons. Yeah. If that's to promote something and get more people involved in what you're doing, I don't mind then I'm, I'm promote it because that. it's yeah. awareness and yeah. to create it. But I don't like the fact that people take maybe a homeless person taking a photo when they're not looking or oh, look what I've just did. That's you feeding. You're not feeding the homeless. You're feeding your ego. Yeah. So there's a, there is a thin line, but there's so much negativity in the world as well. So if somebody's doing a good deed, you can write about it, but also try and get things to say, how can I help this person more? Is there anybody yeah. else I can get in contact with? Use social media to try and help someone, not just obviously help yourself, but everything I do, mate, I, I feel good. Yeah. Uh, so as I find mine, am I doing this? I question myself, am I doing this for what reasons? Am I, I doing it for me? Myself. Am I doing yeah, it for someone yeah. else? So I'm, I'm still fucking battling. Even though I'm doing good things, I'm still questioning, why am I doing that? Am I, am I a fraud? Am I telling lies? Is this that's, another just big like fucking my, agenda? I, I do the same thing. I, I argue with myself thinking, are you doing this for the people or is it because you're liking it? And what I try to do now, I stop being hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I find a balance. I, whatever I do, I enjoy doing it. And you know what? It helps thousands of people every year. So it's like, all right, that's it. It makes me feel good. Yeah. I feel good. But sometimes I don't feel as if I deserve it. The stuff that I do, why am I doing it? I, 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 I question myself, why am I doing this? Do I deserve this? I get a lot of respect. Listen, you get your haters and no matter what you do in life, but I get so much respect and... That, that makes me feel good. So I, and then I question that, but that's me being hard on myself. Why couldn't I be a good guy? Why can't I change? Why I can't I, I do good know. things? It's like, you can't transmit, you can't transmit something uh, that you haven't got. You've got it. You've lived the hardship, so you can transmit it. For some people that have never had hardship, it's like, uh, we was doing this, the, the, the chat last week with um, Leanne Brown, and I kind of had to close things down and say, I'm going to tap into something now, Leanne, if I didn't see you ever struggling with anxiety or something, I wouldn't entertain you. I'd be like, why do you want me to speak to this woman? But she has struggled. Um, influences. The bigger I get, some of these influences are going to be in trouble. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to be like, why the fuck are you claiming to be an influencer? What have you... I believe an influencer, 
I be, I believe you become an influencer because you didn't want you didn't mean to become an influencer, but you've been through some kind of hard misery. time and you've got yeah some misery yeah. and you've got through it and now you're able to transmit mm -hmm. something that you've got to other people to give them hope and show the tools and techniques why you changed. But yeah. you've got your struggles and you have your bad days because every morning you wake up, you have your motor, you have your coffee, you're ready for the day. But some days you say, "I feel fucked today. I, I don't want to go to bed." Show, right? So how do you how do you deal with that for anybody that's in the struggle? What advice would you give them? Reach out. Uh, don't sit with it on your own. Um, I mean, I've done shows and I, I've started the show thinking, just, just put on the brave face, and then I broke down on the show as well, as you would have seen. It's, I, can't, I can't come on the show and lie and say, hi, kids, everything's all right, because sometimes, most of the time, it is now, because I'm out there doing the next right things. I don't lie, don't cheat. There's not many reasons why I should feel bad about myself but my disease wakes up before me and plants a right load of bullshit into my thinking. Some mornings it will catch me out. Most mornings I get up, I'll say, say my prayers. I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual now. And I'll, I'll, I'll say please for a few things throughout the day, for throughout the day. I'll have my coffee, I'll have my water, and then I'll carry a message. And sometimes though, doing it that way, it's not helping me. I'm busy cleaning every fucking else's windows, showing them how to do it. And it was only the other day I had to sit and watch my own show on Instagram. <laughs> I had to watch and I had to listen as if I was another entity telling the world this. And I thought, right, dickhead, take on your own suggestion. Mm. It's all like me fucking preaching it. Yeah, got to practice but, what you preach. Yeah, and I have to tell myself when it, you, you, you hear that in the, the fellowship, to tell yourself what you're talking about mm. to other people. So but I can sometimes find myself lost and then suicidal after nearly two years of sobriety. Uh, life is, you cannot beat my life at the minute because it's my life. I've got the kids back. We live in a nice place. We drive a nice car. I've got a beautiful fucking girlfriend. Now everything is sound, mm -hmm. but still I can wake up and that fuck has been up before me. Because he doesn't <laughs> like my kids, my disease. Yeah. Don't like him. Mm -hmm. Doesn't like friends. And what it's constantly trying to do, as you'll be aware, it throws negative stuff into your thinking because it doesn't like you being happy and being successful because that's getting in the way of what it wants and it wants you on your own, using, fixing. Lying, cheating. Manipulating. That's, it's very difficult. No matter how well your life's going, that's what people need to understand as well. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be speed bumps. We're going to lose loved ones. We're going to... Relationships are going to break down. We could lose our job. But it's about how we handle it. Yeah. Are we in a strong enough position to, have we been tested yet to go, am oh. I going to hide again? Am I going to go, fuck this, I can't handle it? Because let's face it, if you're abusing, if you're, whatever you're taking, any, if you're addicted to anything, let's be honest, you're a loser. You're hiding for the real world. You yeah. can't handle the real world. And yeah. all these big bad boys out there who think it's cool to sit at parties, line after line, they're insecure, they're lonely, they're in yeah. denial. We've been there. We're, we're not talking from books. We're, we've learned the trade. We it. understand that. I see it on social media all the time, you know, um, yeah, but I can sit there all day resenting people and yeah. fucking hating on him and hating on him. Mm. Like, I don't know why they're doing that because, the fit, you know, I'll see like big muscly guys with the big dogs and stuff and it's like, that is just to show the world, stay away from me because I'm a big scared yeah, fucking yeah, puppy yeah. at the end of the day. I see right through that. Do you see a lot of yourself in these All posts? the time, all the time because I've got real life experience. Uh -huh. uh, when somebody's trying to have me over, it's like, Fucking wrong one. And I'll play the game mm -hmm. and it's like, I know exactly what you're doing. You're trying to manipulate the expert because I've been around, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and I kind of, I, I'm happy to have that in life, but I kind of leave it there as well now. I don't, I try not to live it in a resentful kind of way because all I ever did was hate on people, mm -hmm. jealous of people, hated myself. I had a chip on my shoulder. Um, if I did have a God, my God hated me because it was always throwing fucking bad shit to me. It's just bullshit. It was just mm. my thinking. Today, life is good. Um, and I, I believe I was the person that was never going to get it. I was probably the most chaotic person you, you'd come across in like early 20s. I wasn't a nice person. Um, I'd, have, I'd have people's eyes out for fucking no reason. Just not, I'd, I'd rob and steal people. But there, there was always something there behind it. And I never knew what it was. I had acceptance many years ago and I accepted that I was a crazy man, I was a sex addict, I was a drug addict, I was an alcoholic, I was a few, all them things and that's just what it is. I accepted that for a long time until I found recovery and I started listening to people and all a lot older than me, they've been around for many years to say, 
you wasn't well. First time I heard that of someone, it was like, do you mean I wasn't well? Yeah, you have a disease that centers in your mind and that's why you think the way you think and that's why you escape the way you escape. And your drug of choice is not food or vinegar or crack or women. Your drug of choice is more. You want more of anything mm -hmm. that takes you out your thinking. So I'll always have this more disease and I know I'll always have it. Now, if I don't have something more in life, I believe I'll go back to something that will give me instant gratification because I need gratification all the time. It's to focus your energy on something more positive. But it's, for people that's in the struggle, you don't need to fucking live there. You don't need to be addicted. You don't need to hate life. You don't need to be jealous of people. You don't need to hate the world. Yeah. Trust me, I've been there. You've been there. There's no speaking out for people in the schemes for the, the, the bad places and they think a life of crime and a life of drugs and life of stealing and lying is a life. You can change. You can better your life. You just... Take the reins of your life and go, do you want more? Because if you ask people a simple question and you're happy, 99% say no, mm -hmm. because they don't know what the fuck they want. They've been so conditioned to think it's okay to accept that life. Yeah. yeah, you can change, you can better your life. You're living proof that people can change and, and make the, the strives to, to want more. Like you say, whether it's more drugs, whatever, but you're wanting more for your kids, you want more for your girlfriend, you want more for you, yeah. but it's a positive way you've channeled it. Now, if we did it, way. these shows, what we did... Um, I don't promote people for no reason. I promote you all the time. Uh, and I'll, I'll continue to promote people that, that are doing the next right things that are influencers. Mm -hmm. You're an influencer. You didn't ask to be an influencer. Today, people wake up and think, I want to be an influencer today. Um, and then they work out a way of being an influencer. And it doesn't work that way. Um, like you say, you have to go through pain and misery. Now, some people could go through that in life, get clean and well, and they keep it for themselves. And they'll sit in that. It makes them poorer. I believe I'll only get to keep this recovery and this wellness, as they say in the fellowships, you only get to keep what you've got by giving it away. I'll continue giving this away on, a, on the biggest platforms that I can get on um, for the rest of my life. Because if I start to pull away from this, I start to become selfish. If I don't keep giving it away and helping the other addicts, um, give me 10 homeless guys and 10 suits, giving them shit. I'm with the homeless guys and I want to fucking fight to the death with my homeless guys. They're my brothers and sisters then. Um, and I'm very passionate about that. Um, I, I'd hate for somebody to insult someone on the streets or a drug addict in front of, them, in front of me. We've been there. Been there. It's like, this, that's, my, that's my family that he's got the same head as me. It's just that I had a skill around me. I was a half, half good looking lad. I could manipulate women. I have all my women in my life have been hostages. So I can be hostage so I can get about my business, running business, having kids, always having somebody there to like fall upon. If I didn't have that, like a good mother, I'd only be there with them on the streets because I had this disease. I couldn't stop using. Um, for people that think that they can't do it, I feel I get insulted when people say, no, He's passed it in, never going to get it. I'm like, don't, you can't say that about anyone. Mm. I was never going to get this. I've seen them walk in the rooms um, with nothing, not fucking pots of pisses, nothing, red to kill themselves. And then I see some happen over weeks, I see it in their eyes, they start, because they get a connection with them. They leave. Because there's other people, like us saying, there's, there's, been there. yeah, there's, there's a way out of here. you just got to go, I'm one of them, I think I'm one of you. There's not enough, um, when they say it's attraction rather than promotion, uh, press radio and film, Shinny, you can't talk about uh, an, 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 anonymity. I'm like, I tell them to fuck off. Mm -hmm. If they question me, I say, where did it say in the literature? I cannot promote the fellowships of AA and NA and CA. They say, people need to be on their hands and knees to come in. I say, a lot of people on, the, on their hands and knees give up the call. They kill themselves mm -hmm. or they end up dead. Why not? Why can we not give out recovery before people need exactly. it? Exactly, spark the light to show that we're all struggling. We've schools. all got problems. Yeah, yeah. Get them young, schools, schooling. Yeah. Prevention. Mindset. Social media is taking over as well. When you talk about influencers, there's Instagram influencers, there's Facebook influencers, but it's maybe girls standing in bikinis, making other girls self conscious. You can bundle influence a drink and drink drive and do bad things. So look who is influencing you. Make sure it's the right people yeah. who understand life, to understand that. Anybody can change, anybody can better their life and know these fake fucking profiles and fake Instagram photos that are all fixed up, make people look pretty, this great life, cars and jewellery and that ain't what it's all about because you're chasing an illusion. Yeah. You've, we've probably had it all and we fucked it because we still weren't happy. It's to search deep, 
deep and be honest it's, with yourself. Kids, it's, it's a proven fact today. Kids aren't picking up the drink and the drugs. It's a massive percent. It's dropped. The ass has dropped out of drugs and alcohol, to be honest, with our younger generation. But they've picked up other drugs now. They've mm -hmm. picked up self-obsession. Mm -hmm. um, and that's massive. Our kids see things like Love Island, yeah, and mm. think that they can have these chiseled out bodies mm -hmm. by going on shows. It's not the fucking case. Um, it's like people that struggle like us. I can remember going on social media and looking, thinking, why is everyone else's life so fucking great and mine's not? The truth of it all is, it's not great for anyone really. We all go through the bad times. And it's all what we put on. I can put on a pretty face called My Life yeah. is Brilliant. Look at my car that I drive. I told you about, I, I, I done that swim last year, like Loman. Okay. I got on the podium, that up with the handle. <laughs> you might not even know. <laughs> and I, I put it on Instagram like that. I've only turned up to like Loman and won this event. <laughs> and everyone, I didn't win. I couldn't mm -hmm. fucking probably yeah. in the middle or something. But everybody believed what I told them. Mm -hmm. And it, it did out of control to the point where I had to tell my mum like two weeks later. <laughs> Look, I didn't really want to fucking race, you know. But it's easy, we can do that. So for people that struggle and, you know, they're going through bad times, for them to see that, mm -hmm. that's all right, because they think, all right, their life is good. But then they need some others like us. Mm -hmm. And I believe we can say, yeah, get your kids influenced by the likes of us. I can honestly say that under now. We're doing what we do for the right reasons, yeah, because we've been through hardship, we've been through pain and misery, mm -hmm. and now we're able to tell our story in a hope and carry a message that you, you can, you, there's a way out. A lot of these kids are today, the top percent of men's death under the age of 40 in Britain is suicide yeah. because they don't know a way out. There's not enough of us out there uh, on the news. There's not enough of this being promoted. Like, listen... Say you brought 10 kids in here and you'd have like me and you talking to them or two six-year-olds out of there talking to them. Full attention on us because we're still young, we're still... Mm -hmm. They're not going to listen to that. And what I try to say now, if you've got this kind of story um, and then you, you, you can tap into these young kids as today, and that's why I say recovery's cool. Mm -hmm. It's not cool to get on the piss now, kids, and use drugs. I'll tell you what I used to do when I used to fucking, when I couldn't stop, I used to do this. So you boys and you girls... You would not last two minutes with me in a fucking crack house. You'd be in fucking trouble, yeah, because I'd take from you. Um, and it's sometimes they need that kind of fear shown to them. It all looks pretty on social media. It also does all champagne, fathoms and smart cats. Well, it's the social acceptable. Yeah. And the majority of people do dabble in the channel and they think it's cool. All these girls, and I've said it before, they're sitting at parties for two and three days. These girls think it's sexy. They're sitting with the same fucking pants on for three days. Uh, it's dirty. Yeah. These guys have only got one vision. In fact, I was just, I want to fuck something. Predators. That's we've, that. We've been uh, become, exactly. become the big uh -huh. predators of the parties, mm -hmm. sniffing, and we're like the Pied Piper. We have a big bag of coke, it's like our big bag of flute. <laughs> and then we're, we're, we're doing that. And the little rats are following us. Uh, and even the girls today, it's like, they, 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 they lose their self-respect. And it's like, I try to say that to the girls in the schools as well. Don't disrespect yourselves and go out to these animals. Because that's what we are at the end of the day. When we're using drugs, the men become the animals like predators. We want one thing. We want to be fucking all night. And that, that's the truth of it all. But there's not enough truth out there. So... I'm hoping the film that we start, start next week. Well, it's a week. Let's, uh, let's go on a bit of film. How are we getting on with that? The film is, my, we can thank my disease for this mm. film again. Mm -hmm. Because I was approached by the director, Chris Green, over being, playing a part in one of his films. Um, he won't mind me speaking openly and honestly about it. Because he knows my reach. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reaching a couple of million a month off just the, the shinny show mm -hmm. around the world. So he's, he's seen that, I thought, well, I could maybe promote my film. Jump on it as well. Yeah, well, then he's like, all right, Chris, get me a part in it. And as, I've, as, as quick as I've said that to him, my disease was on it like that. Well, what about your film? Well, you've got a film in mm -hmm. and it escalated from there. So as I left Chris, he didn't know this for, for weeks. My head was running thinking, I've got that book on my life. Here. So I keep spouting about recovery. I believe the novelty will wear off unless we step up our game in ways, you know, um, the, the shinny show is not going to die, but it's like, how many times can you ask people to fucking press like and share and share this show in the world? Now I believe I'm at a, a position to create a film that can be done in a way that no one's done it before. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because it's my film and my disease. What's <laughs> more of a good film? <laughs> and then, be brutally honest, 
you know, there's going to be a lot of, um, I have a son, I have a daughter. Um, there's been talk about that. Donovan's, is, my open relationship with him is amazing. Um, there's going to be things in the film my kids aren't going to like and my family aren't going to like to see. But I believe it, this is, you said something to me once, um, and I, I've, I've kept hold of that, and it'd be about a year ago or something, you said, I think this is your calling. Mm -hmm. Can you remember saying that mm -hmm. to me? And when you said that, it stuck with me, and I thought, is this my calling? What, what has my life been up to now except for selfish reasons, um, my careers and all that bullshit? But right now, I think I've got something, and this is, it feels like a calling, but it also feels like a duty now. This is my duty to carry this message because I'm able to, instead of keeping it all to myself, it's like, fuck that, I want to give it the world. I don't just want it when they say, if you help save one person, you've done a great, I'm like, fuck, fuck that, that, I want to save the world. <laughs> I want to save more than that. And that's all I want from the film, is to be an honest film and to show a progression of a child and how it progressed. And I want people to look at the film and think, He's fucking doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, the beginning of the film is going to be me in a crack house, off my head, no clothes on, doing some crazy ass shit. Well, I know half of the population that use drugs will be like, fucking hell, I do this. Mm -hmm. Peeping through letterboxes, tossing me fucking brains out. Mm -hmm. All that truth needs to come out because, because you can look at it and think, why am I doing it? Maybe I'm, I'm unwell. It'll answer so many questions, and I believe the film, if it's done right, can break the stigma of addiction massively, which can help the still suffering out there. And they won't be looked upon as they get looked upon. Like um, you, you were, like I looked upon my dad, I fucking hated him. He was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. He abandoned me and my sister. I didn't know he had a, a killer disease living in his sinking. Um, and the, even his behaviours, I started to act like him through me using that. I get so aggressive in it. I just I ended up being him. Did you ever blame yourself for that? For kids, for your father and the hating. Did you ever? My mum so yeah. My mum so me. She, she she got rid of him because she seen him kick me. Mm -hmm. He was a selfish man. He was just me because mm -hmm. we're selfish uh, to the core. Was that because that's the way we are? And me and my sister became a, uh, an obstruction to him. He wanted all my. He loved my mum. He wanted all her attention. When me and my sister was born, I know what mums are like. A mother's love. I've got one. My mum's love for me is unconditional. Yeah, same. And that's all she done. And he didn't like it. He didn't like me. And then she seen me, kicked me across she the room. getting the attention. Yeah. She didn't like what he done, so she got rid of him. And then the, you, the poor you forgive man, him, shouldn't you? Let's do. I forgive him in a in a an A meeting in Manchester. Yeah, I think it was that like one of those meetings where you you speak the. Yeah, well, like I'm doing a share to mother. Yeah, because in certain meetings you you do like a hang me. What is it? You, it's like you, you stand up and you, you speak to everybody, but it's not like when you stand up, like, I've got addiction problems, I've done this or whatever. This is, I forget what they call it. A main chat? That might be. Um, where you, you you get everything out, everything from your youth, from when you were born. and, and That's how I put it into my main chat, but there, there yeah. might be something else there, yeah. like another kind of programme. Mm -hmm. But when you, Because forgiveness is a big part of life. A lot of people hang on to hatred and, and anxiety and they hold on to that. They hate, they blame, and I can understand it, but holding on to that is just going to make you unwell. Keeps you sick. Yeah. They say lies, deceit, secrets, they will keep you sick mm. unless you get them out. And if you keep them in, you know, you, you do things to block them out. Um, but there's, there's that void, you, yeah. you build up in that void. All the uh, stuff that you're doing as well, it's therapy for yourself. When yeah. you speak, it's therapy for you. Yeah. It's getting it out. Yeah. When, I, when I go to meetings, you know, uh, there's not, I don't, there's certain things that I'll talk about in the meetings that I will not dare speak about on social media um, because that's this is stuff to encourage other men and women to, come to talk about, yeah, to come forward. And I believe I've attended these meetings for many years now and I've, I'm always open and honest about everything, my sexuality, um, my, my being an abuser to women and men. I am women. I get respected by women now, and I love women at the, the meetings. I respect some strong women I didn't like because I couldn't manipulate the strong women. Mm. Today, um, my daughter's a woman, my mum's a woman. I will never lay a finger on a woman's head again. But in my madness, it didn't matter. Um, I, did, I, I never felt I was doing... I felt guilty for, for the harms that I brought upon men and women. But I just thought that was just me. I'm just a mad bastard, and that's what mad people do. But fair play to you for being completely honest and and changing your life, mate. Basically, changing your life, making films and 
Um, I know you're trying to get the homeless song as well. And well, that's for us. That when I yeah. seen what you done there, and I was, I was explaining this to Paul before, someone had mentioned your name to me. So the someone in Scotland doing it like a similar thing to you. And like I said to her, I, said, I usually dismiss that and I'm on with my own shit, but I clicked on yours and right away, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, he's doing all right. And I, and I got into what he was doing. And that blew me away, that, to know that you'd gone out on the streets. And I said to Paul before, Paul's a camera guy, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I said, give it a couple of days on the streets. That means you've been camping. It's like, fuck this now, I need to get back out. And I said, but a full week, you must have been testing, mm -hmm. challenged, but... That in your head, that was for me as well, though. Yeah, because it was a, it was a kind of me talent. calling to say, I'm going to do this. First night, I was the first night was the worst. I'm going to quit. I'm fuck this. What am I doing? It's yeah. Christmas. I want food. I'm sleeping in a chapel fucking doorway. Yeah, yeah. But then I'm thinking, I'm doing this for the greater good. Yeah. I knew what I was doing was going to change lives. This ain't going to change one life. This is going to change masses because people are going to understand how tough it is to be homeless. People are going to understand. Anybody can be homeless. People don't understand. We're all human beings. Whether yeah. you're a junkie, whether you're fucking homeless, whether you're a billionaire, we're all connected. Yeah. Everybody's got the same 24 hours in a day. Yeah. The homeless man's got 24 hours in a day and so is the billionaire. It's how we use that 24 hours to change our life. There was man, that man and the child in that documentary, 32 year on smacking heroin. Uh, smacking methadone. Yeah. Yeah, changed yeah. his life. I think we brought him into, we brought yeah. him into the, the video actually. Uh -huh. um, yeah, seeing see what you've done there, because obviously, you know, they say us, us addicts, uh, and I see you, you're the same as me, you've got the same kind of bed, this is why you do this kind of stuff. Uh, we're the most sensitive people on the planet, mm -hmm. that's why we're used in the fucking first place, because we mm -hmm. don't like these feelings, and it's, mm -hmm. we feel sorry for people, so today we still feel sorry for people, but then what do we do? We channel our energy then, mm -hmm. like, well, let's try and help these people, like, what can we do? Mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think it's, there's going to be a chain reaction soon i don't think it's going to happen anytime soon like the homelessness um there's a there's, there's a few years behind this yet there's, there's something needs to, to give on it i think everything's um, a mindset people there's over seven billion people in the world only takes that spark to for yeah. to snowball and yeah people that like myself it's synchronicity things happen for a reason yeah. we're sitting here for a reason we've spoke for a while now but we're we're here we're making moves actions speak louder than words we're not yeah. just saying it yeah. but i've still got a family to keep i've still got a house to run i'm trying to run this business to take it to new heights and show people I'm from a fucking rough area that's main waves I'm getting names that are people could only dream of that have seen them in fucking uh, in the cinema I'm getting these people on my show and telling their story guys like yourself who are being honest and changing lives it's not just about I don't glamatise anybody even when gangsters come on my show I don't glamatise these people people are saying why are you giving them a platform because they've got a story to tell why did they turn into the way they turned in anger, frustration you tend to go back maybe their dads were abusive their mums were abusive alcoholics or maybe they were bullied. Everything stems for everything has an action and yeah, a ripple yeah. effect. So everything comes from it all stems from when you're younger to what happens is to leading a person or now. And we're rewiring that, we're changing that. And I always say your brain's like a computer. You can rewire it to become the person yeah. you want to become. You, you see it all these cheesy motivational stuff. You are the same, you are the, the director of your own film. You can write those pages down. Forget about the past, and it's difficult because I still think. I'm still insecure, I'm still sensitive as fuck. If I start speaking yeah. to girls, I get, I, I'm, I'm not good enough, well, I, I'm scared scared to get hurt, so I push them away. That's yeah. why I'm still fucking single, because I'm scared to, everything I'm doing, it becomes, I become the old James. I get insecure, she's out, or why is she out, she's away, something dicker, and I start thinking yeah. crazy shit. And something like I could just said, you're the same as me, and it's what I had to learn to do is let go, and let God, we are not, in the book, again, it talks about the director of our, mm. our own film, the actor, mm. that wants to do the lighting, wants to do the scene, and he's doing it all, running around like a mad bastard, and <laughs> it's just everything collapses uh -huh. every time. And I, I've, I've argued with the likes of, like, you know, I can I can slag those so band a lot and say, that spiritual fucker, all he does is talk about spirituality, and he never talks about our disease and my mm. disease, because my disease is mad. And I've, I've, um, I've questioned so many things in my recovery and I've shot myself in the foot like, <laughs> I'm never going to find a girl again. I'm never going to be happy because I've got this disease. Um, I'm always going to want more. I'm never going to get spiritual. I'm never going to get calm. But the more I started to listen to people that have been around a, long, a lot longer than me, I'm, I'm listening now thinking, because I say, Shin, it's just not your time to be all serene yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not your time. But it is there, it will come. Um, 
You will, you will get more humble. You will start to meditate and uh, you will find love again. And I've been hurt. Last year I was hurt, I was crushed, that was my yeah, test. That, yeah, that was my test, that was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to use again. And uh, by the power of fucking people helping me, um, answering phones at crazy times when I've lost my fucking head, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for them people, I, would, I wouldn't be here. I believe if I, I have an healthy fear, if I relapse today, my ego is too big to come back on the show and say, I've relapsed, give me my hearing, I feel like I've got an healthy fear. If I relapsed, a lot of people would fucking relapse on the back of what yeah, I'm doing because yeah. like, it didn't work for shame. There becomes a lot more pressure on, on yeah. your club myself. Pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, I've got a lot of homelessness. I've got a lot of people who are suicidal and got drink addictions, drug addictions. So you become a wee light for yeah. people. He can change. People see the fact, and I was, but the fucking phones were just kicking off when I was partying. So I'm bad for having a dick out. I'm bad for taking the clothes off and being the big man and you fuck all that, but. What happens is, and that's you, you touched on it there, that listening is more important than talking because if you're listening, you're learning something that you don't know because everybody knows something that we don't. You know something that I know, they don't know, and everybody's the same. So I was always, yap, 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 yap. This is talk, 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 steady. Listening to how people are feeling, getting a better understanding and what is it they're actually saying because everybody's got a message and what they're saying. Everybody's... Yeah, the simple things when they say, set the cotton, the cotton bud out your ears and put it in your mouth. And I get that. But, uh, yeah, we have to listen to people that have been there before, that these are people that can influence our lives in a massive way. And if you are going to fucking talk, when I was first around, I wasn't talking about uh, the recovery in this, because I didn't know, I, I knew fuck off. I still know fuck off, but I'm still <laughs> learning. But what I did do, I asked questions all the time. When I opened my mouth, but, but what about this, but what about that? And it's great, ask the questions that if you're struggling about anything in life, anxiety, depression, alcoholism, drug addiction, eating disorders, you're having too much sex with too many women or you're training too much, ask. And if you can't ask anyone, we've all got a device that every one of us on this planet they have got and it's called a phone and you can Google something like fucking, what is it, the um, TEDx anxiety. Do your own homework with anything that we struggle with. I get a lot of inboxes um, I've even contemplated for, you know, if I post it all these out of imagine how much gratification I get because you've helped save my life and this, that, and the other. But I've quickly learned that, that that's fitting here. That, self seeking that. Yeah, totally self seeking. And it's everything that I fucking mm -hmm. preach about. Don't be doing that. But in their messages, I try to reply them the best way I can. And it's not, I'll not get into to a discussion. I'll just say, YouTube, what your problem is, and have a listen and educate yourself in that field. The only way I've, I'm doing so well in recovery is because I've sat and I've educated myself in the field of recovery because I sit and I listen by people that have been around a long time um, in this in this field. Uh, the 12-step program, AA, I've done it that way. But then I needed more. That wasn't enough. I needed the NA way because I heard it was dead brutal. It rips everything out of you. And you've got to be careful what you wish for because it ripped everything out of me, that fucking green and gold book. But I today I'm educated in the field, field of alcoholism. I know what the fucking thing's been up to all these years. Um, and that, I, I believe that's the same for anything. Anxiety, depression, all them things I've just spoke about, eating disorders. Get off social media for 10 minutes if you can. I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then just research for yourself. I'm struggling with anxiety. Uh, if you're a bit shy about ringing and asking someone or attending groups, them things that we've got there, we can call them a burden, but you know what? They can be used for fucking mm -hmm. good use. It can save lives. For anybody in the struggle to know that doesn't think there's a way out or maybe too embarrassed or too ashamed, too much pride to come forward, what advice would you give them? Because there's a way out for everyone. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They could bring anybody to me. If it's a human being or she and they're still breathing, They've got a chance. You've still got more to give. They could, yeah, definitely. There's hope there for them because I've seen I've seen these miracles happen. But it's not, we can't. I wish I had a magic wand. I wish I had a fucking magic cape where I could swoop down on the fucking planet and give the world recovery and spew it out onto them all. But that's not the case. The, it's the, the individual. The individual wants it enough. Um, yeah, there's a way out. But we can't. We can't lead, as I say, you can, you can only lead a horse to water. You can't make the, yeah. the horse drink the water. Same as if the individual wants it bad enough, there's a way out. Of course it is. Should for anyone. They need to try and identify what the problem is in the situation. 
understand, ask yourself the question, are you happy? If you're not happy, then do the things. A lot of people are scared to make changes. A lot of people get friends for 20, 30, 40 years that they maybe think they're letting them down or... But it's a lonely journey changing as well. You can't... Nobody's come to fucking save you. Nobody's come to take your hand and say, oh, this is the way to do it. You need to do it yourself. You need to take that first step to better your life. You're living proof, including myself, that it can be done. You can change. Anything is you possible. Can change. Is. That first day, that first week, and then that first month, you start realising... When I get relapsing, when I was off it for nearly two years and then I relapsed, I jumped, I ended up fucking it for nearly a year, but then I realised how good I'd felt when I was off it. My life was good, I was seeing my kids, I was doing big things. When I'm off it, I do big things, but yet you get scared, fear creeps in. You don't deserve this. Fuck it, lines out. And then before you know it, you're lying in a crack then. When you say, it's, it's not, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not, it's not coincidence. Mm -hmm. When you start doing good things in life, good things happen. Yeah. When you start helping people, good things happen again. And it's like, it's not, um, it's karma. Mm. They call it karma. I like to believe it in like, there's something that watches all, each it, we've got our own personal higher power. People call it God, I just call it an higher power. I believe it's an energy. And what you are, what you, what you, you throw out there, it comes back to you. If you're throwing out hate, um, and misery and resentment on other people and that, you're just going to be unwell. Mm -hmm. Um, but these, these are different. If they, if they brought a 12 step program into schools tomorrow, in 10 years time, we would have a fucking population of real well kids out there. It's just that they don't know how to tap into it because they're programmed. Well, they're programmed by, to sit at a desk and crunch numbers, memorization. Paying other people. There's not really films. much individuality or creativity because we've all got creativity, but we don't use it because we can talk, sit at a desk, write this, study this history, talk about these wars. That's just the way it is, and it's if they brought in yoga to schools, I know some schools are doing it, breathing exercises, money management. Spirituality. Yeah, how to handle death. Yeah. People fucking die, don't know how to handle it. Yeah, yeah. But even happens, bang, I, I'm on the drink, party yeah. time, because I want to forget, I can't face the fact that you're dead, so yeah. I'll be the big man, I'll take all the drink and drugs in the world to numb all the pain. Well, that's not promoted. Yeah. That's not promoted. How, mm -hmm. how, how do we get on? It's all right, people saying, get over it, you need to you need to get a balance in your life. It's like, well, fucking show me what balance means, mm -hmm. or... You, you need to snap out of this. When you're unwell and you're not feeling good, I've suffered with depression from a very early age and anxiety. Today... Exercise has helped you a lot, though. Massive. That's why yeah. I try and promote this. You know, I can, I can, again, I can't curse the fellowships because it's helped save my life. Recovery and 12-step programmes, they're addiction in itself. They're a great addiction to be involved in if you are the addict of our type, the hopeless type. We need to be addicted to some and that, that addictiveness is like helping others, uh, doing service in the field. But what I argue against that is we, we come away from being a slave to a substance or a drink or a way of life. How dare you allow us to become a slave to something else again? Now, recovery first and foremost we need as addicts in life. But then what about the add-ons that don't get promoted? So I like to, because I'm a, I'm a, a cunt, I like to have a go at people that I think are not doing good in the world. I'll argue and say, well, what about this? I don't know about exercise. What about success? You don't need all the glittery things in life. It's all for the near. And I get that. But then it's like you kind of took away from life then, mm -hmm. and then you're caught up in another bubble, mm -hmm. another form of addiction. So what I say is if you're an addict, you get recovery, you stick with recovery, but then there's add-ons in life. And this is, I'm listening to people that are 20 and 30 years sober that speak to me on a regular basis and say, Shane, these are add-ons. Don't forget, you do not promote just exercise in this field for the addicts because you will pick up again, and I get that. So it's right, recovery first, success, being nice, helping others, being a good friend, all them good things. They're all addictions, really. So just transfer your addictions, but make sure you fucking stick with it. Re the main recovery. one. Mm -hmm. People ask to come and train with me from meetings all the time. Mm -hmm. And first I'll say, I'll say, we will eventually train, but you need to... Yeah. I need to see you doing this work first, mm -hmm. then we'll do the gym. How have you been on, getting on with the negative comments? Because I get, I get them as well. I get them all the time. They, they fuck me up, man. I, I want to go, I want to kill. I seriously, I'm in the inbox, so there's my number, fucking phone me. Yeah. And it's, I'm not, I used to be, because the big, I'm not blowing my trumpet, but the more successful I'm becoming, the more comments I'm getting. It's thousands every week, and it's, yeah. and you, you've got assholes, but then you kind of do get used to it, and you realise, like, wait a minute, if, I'm, I'm getting used to it now, but you 
five months. When you first started ago. out, yeah. I'm thinking, fuck this, I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. I'm in there anymore. It's my number for me. At least me, go for a square oh, ball. Oh, you're going there. Uh, you know, fuck oh, yeah, and then bang my energy me. goes. I was doing it the other week saying, you know, like having jokes like saying, I mean, yeah, you look a bit silly with your white vest on your profile picture. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be hard work for you fighting so And I found myself, and then what I'd done, I'd, I quickly learned from, from attending regular meetings, listen, you hating bastard, I'm just going to love you till you love yourself. Uh -huh. And that sparks them off on the show. Now uh -huh. everyone always says, tell them Shane, love them till they love themselves. And most of the time what I'll do, I'll say, for you to come on a show and fucking hate me when I'm trying to help people with uh, anxiety, depression, all them things. For you to come on here and be like that. And I'll question and I'll say, I reckon you must have a fucking deep root problem too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to love you till you love yourself and I'm going to offer you my hand. And nine times out of ten, I can vision of my own thinking. He's like, ah! <laughs> and they'll go, all right, I am sorry. I didn't realise what the show was about. Mm. Bang, right, there's mine, there's my heart. Welcome to the Shinny Show Live. We don't hate on here. Mm. If you want to come on with hate, and what I've started doing as well, just block them. Mm -hmm. Say, give me a few more, give me a kick, carry on, or are you going to be all right and join And if you struggled ever, I'm here to hold my hands out. So I try and become like a bit mm. of a, and it's the same again. I'm thinking, I'm getting loads of gratification right. here because I'm not biting, mm -hmm. but sometimes I can bite. Yeah, but that's just the ego's been dented. That's yeah. the old characters kicking in. But the ones that are putting negative comments, that would have probably been us 10, 15 yeah. years ago, just being a wanker. Well, you're go well. But you're going to get it. And that's for people to get a better understanding. People are unwell themselves. So that's just a deflection image. I'm going to try and bring you down because I'm unhappy and it's to be accepting them and sending them love and saying, I'm going to love you. But it's learning you that I had to learn that. Uh -huh. My instant reaction would be, you're dead. I want to know where you live. <laughs> I want to make <laughs> you, you, you live in Wales, right? Yeah. I'm going to drive. And you know what? My old madness would be like, let's locate this country and let's go make an example. Fucking crazy, yeah. stupid shit. Mm -hmm. Today it's different because yeah. it's like, listen, you that's what I'm learning going on. Really big time because I'm starting to understand, and that's everything I'm promoting. Fucking practice what you preach. Don't get annoyed. Don't get agitated. But it depends because my mood swings are up and down as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm you do a lot. You do a lot on here, um, on with a podcast. Uh -huh. I've been doing this for years now, uh -huh. but I've had these comments. I've kind of learnt by loads of it, like biting into, biting into it, and all I had to do was like. I don't know, I don't just say, listen, I'm just going to love you till yourself because everyone was loving me for being that way. Mm -hmm. No one liked me for being a cunt and arguing mm -hmm. back, but I picked up on the love and I thought, all right, I'm going to transfer this one. Like, I'm going to love you till you love yourself. Uh -huh. and Because you've never had all them comments all the time. I've kind of learned to roll with it and just go, I'm just going to block you if you carry on. It, now mm -hmm. I've made it into a bit of a positive. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, you need to do more like <laughs> shows. You need to start <laughs> yourself up with it. What's the plans for the future then? Um, the film... Uh, the management see something now where we're doing these episodes, travelling, meeting people. Uh, probably one of the best shows I've done was only the other week with uh, Scott McInerney from Coventry, and he was a full-blown, three and a half decades addict uh, like no other. Mm -hmm. One of the most chaotic people I ever met when I first met him. And I want to do more of that. Uh, I know I understand that I have to to do the, the blue tickers and the, the celebrities course we have to we have to pull because then we're, we're going to get we're going to get out there yeah. yeah that more people we're playing the game listen we're playing the game we're still creating yeah. a business and crowd, uh, I want to be number one I'm still, uh, and that's not a bad thing to be successful yeah. but have balance yeah. understanding what's real and what's fake and, and, and help people getting stuff across where can people watch your film um, well the, is there a release date or anything yeah the first trailer we start filming over the next few weeks so we're making a a trailer um, not a promotional video, this is going to be like a four minute flash impact where we want the viewers, um, because there's, there's a platform waiting for them now that we've got a world audience, Australia, New Zealand watching mm -hmm. the show, everybody's going to want to watch this film from Recovery. So we're, we're doing it in a certain way where they, they see it right away where they, they've got to watch this film. Mm -hmm. So it'll go from the, the trailer, we'll go to Netflix, Amazon, we're confident we'll get private funding if need be. Mm -hmm. We don't believe we're going to need to we'll take it to festivals? Yeah, there's going to be festivals and stuff, but we believe, my addict believes, my disease, it's got a possibility of being a box office mover. The bigger this gets out there, mm -hmm. the, the more opportunity we get to, to then it'll be coming to school mm -hmm. and then it becomes like Resonance an educational like mover. That, yeah. So in the chaos, mm -hmm. in the midst of all that, there's going to be a constant story of the disease of addiction, mm -hmm. why I've done all these things, and it'll be a noise in the film, like a humming sound, like Jaws, there, and uh -huh. then 
but not as such. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not as stupid as that. <laughs> but to, to say, ah, this is this is that disease he's on about again. It's on, it's on him again. Mm -hmm. This is why he behave like that. So people get identification in the film. Um, and yet, and you know, like the, the film, it's for me. All I have to say on the shows. If you've got any questions now? Watch the film. Mm -hmm. Watch the film. All the answers are in there because there's only so many years I'll be able to continue spouting this off. Mm -hmm. the, this, I, I believe I'll go to another level, which is fine. But where I'm at now, it's like it's, it's becoming a bit same, a bit stagnant. And for me to keep carrying this message, it needs to be, and I believe the biggest way of doing it is put it on a fucking film. Mm -hmm. And then like the film, Kez, we're mm -hmm. all watching school. One of the most famous films ever. I believe this film could be... The next big thing. Yeah. Schools, the schools. universities, prisons, yeah. everywhere. People yeah. to change their life. Sure. How yeah. people watch your show? Facebook, Instagram? Well, yeah, the Instagram is Shinny Show Live. The Twitter is Shinny Show Live. And the group on Facebook is Shinny Show Live. And then the only thing that's different is uh, the page that I do the live shows on, and that's just Shinny. We kept it simple. Mm -hmm. S-H-I, double M-Y... Um, YouTube, get to it if you want. That's at James Shinny Davenport. Yeah, there's loads of things. If you are listening, it's the app. Uh, you can download the app to your own screens on your phones. That's shinnyshowlive.uk. So there's, there's a load of things. Amazing, there. brother. Listen. Can I just ask one thing as well? Can. What's the next thing for you, James? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's fucked us. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> um, Next big thing is to take that show to be number one in the UK. Yes. Bigger platform. Bigger people. I love what I do. I love speaking to people. I love to get who they are and an understanding. I'm starting to understand people more because the biggest I'm starting, podcast yeah. platform in the UK. Yes, yeah, number one. The plan is to become number one in Scotland, which I am now yeah. in just under a year. It's amazing. It's grown and grown and grown. I'm confident in myself, and even though the addiction can be as an addiction, but you've still got to have vision. We've got to have dreams. We've got to have progression. Next big thing is, is to take UK. I believe in my confidence. I believe in the caliber I guess, and I believe I can bring people their best self, people become honest. I yeah. believe I've got a gift where people can relax, people forget the cameras are there, and, and I'm, I'm not just, I don't, glor like I've said before, I don't glorify people, this is my spiritual message to show people that we all make mistakes, people can change, and everybody that's come on have changed. I think some this way could be your calling, James. Yes, brother. <laughs> you tell my people, then, where they can listen to your podcast? Um, listen to my podcast on YouTube, uh, just type in James English, um, iTunes, again, James English, anything goes. Podbean, Instagram, James English, Facebook, James English. It's all there for you to go and see, man. But it's been an absolute pleasure. And what you're doing with your life is nice absolutely you. phenomenal. And you're a good light, mate. You're a good yeah, soul to. Too, you're making massive strides. And I appreciate being a good friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cheers, James. I can't wait, mate. Everything goes out. Thank you. Thanks. Boom.